Put your eyes as you're able. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Good morning and welcome to worship here at New Life Metropolitan Community Church. Whether you're on site or joining us by live stream, it's always good to have you here and connected in God's spirit. Today, make yourself at home. We say this every week. We're just regular folks who believe that God's love is for everyone. Can I hear an amen to that? Uh, let's see. Chris and Jamie are going to come and lead us in the gathering call today. Please respond in the bold and try your hand in the Spanish if you'd like. When my followers call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them when they are in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. Let us call upon the Lord. Invoquemos al Señor. They will call upon my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people, and they will say, the Lord is my God. El Señor es mi Dios. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. Beloved, let, let us love one another. Amados, amámonos unos a otros. Let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. No amemos de palabra ni de boca, sino con hechos y en verdad. By this all people will know. En esto conocerán todos que somos seguidores de Jesús. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures as we continue and sing together. day for your presence with us in this space and place and ever so mindful that folks all across this land and across the country are facing all kinds of challenges today. May your spirit find us and them in this moment and we praise you for all that you are and all that you make it possible for us to experience and share together in your love and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, take just a moment and say good morning to somebody around you, maybe somebody you hadn't seen. Wave across the aisle. If you're joining us by live stream today, wherever you are, we're delighted to know that you're connecting with us. I know we'd like to hear from you too. Type in a comment if you'd like. Good morning. Good morning, Tony and Jim. Good morning. 
you must be tired. I didn't even have to tell you to sit down today. And again, welcome. If you're visiting with us maybe for the first time, know that we're delighted to have you in worship with us or maybe first time after a while. As I said earlier, we're just regular folks who believe that God's love is for all people. Wow, what an incredible, I don't even know how to describe this past week as so many folks across this land from Florida into Georgia into the Carolinas and western part of North Carolina and Virginia and Tennessee are suffering an awful lot. Jen has gone uh, over the weekend to pick up her mom and bring her back who was up uh, in my hometown of Marion. I just got back yesterday uh, and I'll talk more about what's going on in western North Carolina in a little bit. We're holding a whole lot of emotions today, are we not? We have a lot, and, and that's, that's true. It seems like that's true more often than not these days as we hear news from all across the world and then just natural disasters, things that are going on in our lives and the challenges we face right here at home too. So I'd encourage each of us just to take a moment, do your shoulders back a little bit, breathe, not on each other, but just breathe, a deep breath in, and now just go to sleep. It's not quite time. I'll wake you up before the offering. Is that okay? All right. Sometimes we need to just, in the midst of everything we're feeling, sometimes we just need to have that moment just to, to laugh, not at each other, but with each other in everything that we do. A couple of things, and I know you miss Jen for the announcements. She does such a wonderful job with everything that she does and that. And don't tell her I said that. We'll just uh, let her come back in all her glory when she does come back. A couple of things if you look at what's happening. Uh, Randy is here this morning. Randy, raise your hand. Randy is helping to coordinate. Uh, you know, we're coming up this week on National Coming Out Day, and that's on the 11th. And that's not just wherever you are in the LGBTQAI plus umbrella that can be being someone who's queer. It can be an ally to our community, too. But this year, as we think about the theme, is transformative love. Transformative love means also we may need to step up to the plate. And if there's anything this year we need to step up to the plate on, in addition to helping those who have been challenged and lost everything, but it's also to vote. Yeah. Randy will be helping to coordinate our efforts as we work together with others to encourage folks to make sure they're registered to vote. You can actually register to vote here in the Commonwealth of Virginia right up until Election Day. We encourage people not to do that. Do it early because if you do it that day, it gets counted as a provisional vote in the ballot until everything is done. So go ahead and do it early. If you have questions, Randy, I think on Tuesday evening here at, what, 630? Yeah, do you want me to talk about that? Real quick, if you will. Come on, Randy, move it. <laughs> hey, y'all. So um, we are partners, partnering with the Virginia Interfaith Coalition, which is uh, based in Richmond, and um, they are involved with a lot of um, issues that are important to voters, like health care and fair housing and fair wages. Um, but anyway, we are put it, we, they gave us um, the names of 100 um, infrequent voters in Suffolk, and our job is to fill out 100 postcards mm -hmm. and sign them and say, you know, we need you to get out to vote on November 5th. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing on Tuesday. Um, so I need people to come out and help me so I don't have to write out 100 postcards. <laughs> um, and the other thing that we're doing is we made some flyers that will go out with the meals um, next week and at um, Trunk or Treat. Um, with information on voting in the city of Norfolk for the people in our neighborhood. So we have those two initiatives coming. So anyone that can come out on Tuesday to help, um, there might be refreshments. Actually, there will be cookies. I'll have my husband make some cookies <laughs> as, a, as an incentive. And if you don't want to sign your name, you can sign Randy's, right, on the postcard? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> The important thing is that we encourage vote. Again, uh, you know, I've said this many times in the past. I've always prided myself in not sounding partisan. Today it's hard to talk about justice issues without sounding partisan. And we are not going to stop talking about justice issues that impact our community, but also those around us, our neighbors and friends too, because we will speak up for those who are oppressed. And whether it's about women's reproductive rights or voting rights or Black Lives Matters, all these many things that impact us in so many ways. A couple of other things coming up. Uh, Board of Directors uh, meets by Go uh, this week on Google Meets. If you'd like to join that meeting, 
reach out to us. We'll send you the link. It is an open meeting. I'm going to let you read most of these others coming up. I do want to remind you that on the 24th of this month, we're going to be screening the movie 1946, uh, which talks about the one little word that got inserted into things that are used against us. And so I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to try to preview it this coming week. Uh, but that will be here on site, and we're partnering with the Virginia Queer Film Festival to be able to make that possible. Uh, Randy mentioned Trunk or Treat. If you're planning to do that, please let us know so we make sure that we've got folks here. I'm going to let you take a look at all these things that are going on. If you have questions, you can get in touch with me or with Jen or any of us. There are lots of ways for us to be present with our community here. So let's take just a moment and say thank you, God, for the gift of being able to share this life together. And my goodness, there are so many folks across the land that need to know that they are cared for in a lot of ways. Now, as I said earlier, we're holding a lot in our hands this week. We continue to be in the midst of uh, Latino, Latina, Latinx, Hispanic Heritage Month to the mid part of this month. As we go into October, it is LGBTQAI plus History Month and National Coming Out Day. It's also the celebration of 56 years. Actually, this day, I think the, the bulletin says the 8th, but it was actually October the 6th. I heard Troy Perry actually say on a video, an old video from 1971. Uh, I wasn't born yet. Uh, but <laughs> that it was October the 6th that he invited 12 people. Uh, and we'll talk some more about this uh, to his house. And that became Metropolitan Community Churches. In the midst of everything that we're holding on and the midst of us feeling the freedoms that we have today, to be in this space and place, it wasn't always true, was it? As we think about uh, Latino, Latina, Latin, Latinx, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, especially in the LGBTQAI plus community. There was one thing that happened in 1959. Now, that was before I was born, Betty. Just wanted to make, make sure. Tony's sitting over here today. He's on the, I don't know if this is the good side or the bad side. That's to be determined yet. But in 1959, have you ever heard of something called the Cooper Donut Riots? I had not either. But John Francisco Ricci, 10 years before Stonewall, wrote about this uh, in his novel and book, City of Night, that became a classic gay literature. It was uh, praised by James Baldwin, but he was in that he referenced this supposedly true event that happened. I know some people have debated, oh, no, that didn't really happen. He made it up. But other folks said, no, it really happened. And because folks were being harassed by the police in Los Angeles, that they threw donuts this time at the police. It didn't get, I know the irony of that is, is not missed upon you, I can tell that by then. So it was uh, Cooper's, I guess, donuts was where this happened in 1959. And I say all that to say this is that this predominantly happened in the Latino community. And so sometimes things get overlooked and people are invisible even in our own communities. And so I, I say again, I say all that to say this, Stonewall was important, but it wasn't the first time that people were being harassed. It wasn't the first time that people wanted to speak up and do something and were pushed to the point that they needed to respond. So may God open the awareness of our hearts and minds to be able to see those who may be invisible right around us this day as we celebrate all that we have today. Now, you see also here on the altar is a shofar. This past week was Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. And it is also referred to as the blowing. Now, I, I don't even go there. Um, <laughs> The blowing of the shofar was to call the people of God together. And last week, uh, I see Pat and Baby coming in. A couple weeks ago, we did the first uh, Christian Muslim wedding. And I think about that in so many ways that to the coming together of our face at a time when it's so important and it might be divisive for some to hold up and say, well, yes, what about the Jewish folks, but the people of Gaza, but we are all people of God and people of one faith. And in so many ways, it connects all of us. 
And this blowing of the shofar, the 10 days of all leading up to Yom Kippur, which will happen coming up, it's a reminder for all of us to come together in unity. The Old Testament scripture says we are called to be a community of peoples. I want you to look around at your neighbor and say, you are my community. You may not look like me. You may not smell like me. But you're my people. You're my people. In a few moments during our prayer time, we will light this yellow candle as a reminder for world peace. And I'm going to blow the shofar as a reminder for all people, Jewish, Muslims, all people of faith, to come together in a way to lay down arms, to talk about... and. Then the the Rosh Hashanah, there are four different ways of observing the new year in the Jewish faith. And Rosh Hashanah, one of them is the calendar year, but it also marks the time for sabbatical, but also that wonderful word that you know I hate called Jubilee. Jubilee. Jeff's not on it today. He was supposed to be ready for it. There we go. (laughs) One more time, Jeff. So I want you to say Jubilee with me. Jubilee. 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 You're invited invited. to that happy Jubilee. Jubilee Jubilee actually is a time of wiping away, resetting things. And I'm calling upon all people, all of us, to take a moment of pause, especially as we're reminded with all the devastation that we've seen in the Carolinas and Virginia and all those other places to reset our lives, to remember what's important in life. So many times we get wrapped around little things that don't count for a hill of beans, as the old pastor said, once we get to heaven. And Jubilee is a resetting of all of that. So as I blow this sound of the shofar, take just a moment and ask God's Spirit to allow you to reset whatever feelings we may have against someone or for someone that is causing us angst because life is important, life is too short. For us not to do otherwise. Hear now the sound of the shofar. May those walls that separate us be torn down and the reconciling spirit of God's love find each of us as we sing together. Christ has broken down. 
Sometimes that wall is among ourselves. Sometimes that wall is with other people. Maybe sometimes that wall is even inside of us as we hold everything, compartmentalize everything from our praises and joys to those things that we are concerned and weighed down with. And as that wall gets broken, sometimes all of that gets merged together and sometimes we may even lose our way. Last week I had the opportunity to share with MCC Omaha, Nebraska for their 50th anniversary. They're, what, four years older than we are. And it was great to be with them. And one of the things that I said to them was, and the title of that message was, when you get to a jumping off place, referencing that great movie, Fried Green Tomatoes. If you, some of you seen it, it took me forever to realize that that was a lesbian love story. If you didn't realize that, go watch it. You'll get it now. It took me a long time to realize that. And Jessica Tandy's character talks about getting to the jumping off place. And that can be in our own lives or it can be where we're stepping out on faith. And so the message I had with them was when you get to a jumping off place in faith, what you going to do? What you going to do next? And if I had to rewrite that today, and, and then I used that scripture of when you're at a crossroads, look for the ancient past. Look for the ancient ways, the good ways, and walk in it. If I had to preach that message today, I would probably say, what are you going to do when the road is washed out? Because we see that so many times in North Carolina right now when people, we can't even get to people. But wherever we are today in this particular moment, what are we going to do? As we're at a jumping off place in our own personal lives, but as we celebrate 56 years and at the end of this month, we'll be celebrating our own presence right here in Hampton Road. So it's a month of, of celebration, but yet a month of devastation with everything that we see from all the news reports and the personal things. When I went home, my dad and my aunt are about a mile from where the worst bad, bad places start. Uh, they still don't have power, they don't have cell phone, but relative to a whole lot of folks, they're okay. They both have generators, and I was up there and came back this week, maybe going back up this next week. Jennifer's gone to get her mom, but there are folks, as we went into the worst area, one of the worst areas near us, I should say, uh, my dad's 98-year-old sister, his last sister, uh, is okay, but she's in that area, and just across from where she lives and where we have some property, too, it looks like a war zone. I don't see how anybody could have survived it. And my dad's first cousin lives about a mile up on, uh, further than that, and his house was up about 200 feet above the creek and had a good-sized backyard, but now his house is right at the edge because the whole mountainside slid off. And as we're coming back out of that area, dodging power lines and where the road was washed down to one lane, and they had crews, they did have some crews in there trying to do what they could to rebuild bridges and things like that. I looked and there were about a dozen people down in the water and I thought first, are they fishing? No, they were searching for bodies because folks are still being, are still missing uh, and we just don't know yet. There are many parts of the areas that you, where roads have been washed out that we simply can't get to them. So whether it's by helicopter or by drones, even a mule train taking folks in, uh, where there's not access. So lots of things for us to hold in our prayer and realize, my goodness, this can happen to any of us anywhere. The people of Western North Carolina would have never imagined that this kind of devastation could have happened there because in the past when we've had floods or flash floods, you might have it in one little section of the county, but then you can go into town or the next city over or town over and you're okay. The best way I can describe it is if you've seen that Serve Pro commercial where they have this great big bucket of container of water above a house and they're trying to show what they can do, what water damage to do, and it gets dumped on the house. Have you seen that commercial? Mm -hmm. It's almost like somebody had a bucket and container that was big enough to cover the third of the state of North Carolina and it got dropped on everywhere. So if you have thoughts about sending things, yes, please send things. If you have a way to do that, if you'd like to make a donation, either through our duo fund or you can designate it, we'll make sure it gets either to the MCC Disaster Relief Fund uh, or we'll channel that to appropriate folks so that they can get the basic supplies. In many areas, uh, like in my hometown, it's, it's sort of split. Some folks are okay, some people are being restored power. For other folks, it's going to be weeks, if not months, before they receive power. And how it gets ba built back is a whole other thing, or if at all. <laughs> Lord, in this moment, hold us as we hold each other.
I'm going to ask someone, if you will, to come and light the yellow candle. As I mentioned, it's doing multiple purposes today to remind us that we're praying for world peace, but we're also in lighting it in not just in memory, but holding all those who have lost loss of life, loss of livelihood, everything else, homes and otherwise. Jeff, if you will light the yellow candle to guide our thoughts today. And yet, life goes on here, does it not? Holding all of those folks, but also the challenges that we face, that we have in our own personal lives. And sometimes we think, oh, I shouldn't complain. But then it's part of life, isn't it, that we do. We may worry about this, that, or the other. It may seem insignificant, but in the moment, it's significant for us. And so let's pray for each other in this moment. Look around. You don't have to bow your head to pray all the time. Pick out two or three people that you'd like to pray for this morning. You don't even have to tell them that you're praying for them. And don't do it with somebody that you think needs to change their life. Do this in a good way, please. I know you, and you know me. This side laughed first, so this is definitely the bad side today. You all are the good side today. In the midst of that, God is a God of still of joy in the midst of devastation. What's something that you can give thanks for in this moment? Say it out loud, please. Friends. Yes. Today we are celebrating not just the anniversary of Metropolitan Community Churches, but Pat and Sumsock, we, mar- we had a wonderful celebration of their relationship and marriage, what, 31 years uh, together, and wow, after being separated across the globe, and in July, 46 years with uh, Yvette and Pee Wee, but I want you to invite you, especially if you're joining us by live stream, I know it's easy sometimes when we get to communion in the service to just say, okay, everything's over. After communion today, we're going to do something very special we're going to be with Jim and Tony as they renew their vows after 50 years together. Yes. Tony was 40 about that time. (laughs) Betty, would you come and give words to our prayer? Let's continue to hold uh, the Crespo family. Uh, Tony Crespo, let's also hold Gene Dudney as he's uh, still in rehab as far as trying to get physically back to where he needs to be. And uh, no doubt there are others. I invite you to write your praises and concerns in the prayer book if you'd like, and our prayer and intercessory group will lift them up throughout the week. Betty, would you give word to our prayer? Let us pray. Holy God, precious God, hear our prayers. Hear our thoughts. Keep our community safe. (coughs) Hear our cries. Let us give thanks for who you are and who you've called us to be. As we love and respect and continue to uplift each other. In your glorious name we pray. Amen. 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 Kyrie eleison. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Kyrie eleison.
let's try something. Would you rise as you're able for just a moment? <clears throat> Carrie, by the way, let's keep Carrie in our prayers. Carrie was, uh, had reaction to a vaccine last week and then had some excruciating back pain this week. And his prescription wasn't available even until Monday. So keep Carrie in our prayers today. This uh, core response to our prayer it just hits me as something that we forget that God does smile on us. And let's change the words a little bit. Let's say, God has smiled on me. Let's say, God, and look around the next verse and say, God has smiled on you. As you look to share that with each other and say, God has set me free. Can we try that? Sure. All right, here we go. So the first time is, God has set me free. Then you look to a neighbor and say, God has smiled on you. And then, God has set me free. Are you ready for that? Can you do it? Good side and bad side together. All the walls have been broken down, right? All right. All right, here we go. God has set me free. All right, let's try that one more time. That was the rehearsal. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Here we go. We can do this. Remember, it's God has smiled on me. Look to your neighbor and say, God has smiled on you. And then not he, but God has set me free. Are you with me? All right, here we go. Look to your neighbor. God has set me free. may be seated. <laughs> Hear now these words of Scripture. Words of Scripture from Luke chapter 14, verses 1 and 12 through 23. On a Sabbath day, Jesus went to the home of a leading Pharisee to eat with him. The people there were all watching him very closely. Then Jesus said to the Pharisee who had invited him, when you give a lunch or a dinner, don't invite only your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors. At another time, they will pay you back by inviting you to eat with them. Instead, when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, and the blind. Then you will have great blessings because these people cannot pay you back. They have nothing, but God will reward you at the time when all godly people rise from death. One of the men sitting at the table with Jesus heard these things. The man said to him, It will be a great blessing for anyone to eat a meal in God's kingdom. Jesus said to him, A man gave a big dinner. He invited many people. When it was time to eat, he sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, the food is ready. But all the guests said they could not come. Each one made an excuse. The first one said, I've just bought a field, so I must go look at it. Please excuse me. Another man said, I have just bought five pairs of work animals. I must go and try them out. Please excuse me. A third man said, I just got married. I can't come. So the servant returned and told what happened. The man who invited them was angry. He said, hurry, go into the streets and alleys of the town. Bring me the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Later, the servant said to him, I did what you told me to do, but we still have places for more people. Then he said to the servant, Go out to the highways and country roads. Tell the people there to come. I want my house to be full. It's amazing to me how many lessons we can learn from a passage of Scripture like that. As we think about being invited to the party. There's a difference, I think, in being invited to the party and being late for the party. I think sometimes we call that gay time. <laughs> I've often said, it's all right to come late to church just as long as you come. I won't call any names, Willie Farmer, but sometimes Willie will show up right before <laughs> communion and has for years. It's okay. I once had an 80-year-old man in one of my churches who says, he didn't want to come to church, but he had, we had a good connection. He said, I, I really like you. I want to come to church, but I'm going to give you it, it, to 12 o'clock. And at four minutes after 12, if you're not done, I'm leaving. I said, you come on. I'm fine with that. At 12 o'clock, old Hubert would do this. 
I knew I had four minutes before we got up and left. Sometimes I was finished, sometimes I wasn't. I should be through about four today. Don't worry about that. As we together come into this space and place, we come bringing a whole lot of things. But if we think about this scripture, we also are at a table that is not full. And thank God for folks like Troy Perry, who opened the door in many ways for folks, what used to be called the gay and lesbian folks, but then we became the, the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, intersect, on and on and on, allied, and there's so many different things. Somebody said to me not too long ago, wow, when I first came out, it was either being gay or lesbian. If I had all those choices now, I'm not sure what I would tell, what I would make. <laughs> Maybe that's true for some of us. But, you know, God's grace and mercy is continuing to evolve in our lives and allow us to be who we want to be. As we celebrate things in this modern technology, I see a young woman back here that I married on Friday night on FaceTime because I couldn't get back from Western North Carolina. Julia and Danielle were married uh, on a friend's dock here in Hampton Roads with me officiating over FaceTime on Friday, Friday afternoon at 4.30. Julia, our blessings for you today. They are very thankful. I could see them, but I guess because I'm sitting in my car in the parking lot of my uh, aunt's uh, assisted living facility, I, they couldn't see me. That was probably good. I hadn't had a shower in three days. I had a, Imagine me with a three-day growth of beard, you know. I thought about leaving that, but I didn't know what y'all would think about that. Uh, it was more of what Alberto would think, not about anything else. But being a community of peoples is accepting of, but not just accepting and not just tolerating, not just welcoming, but including people. And so the question I raise for us today, have we included everybody that we need to include in our lives? May that resonate with us as we strive to be the community of peoples. And when Reverend Troy Perry, you know, he grew up in, outside of Tallahassee and was married. He was a Pentecostal preacher and he was struggling with who he was, but he just knew it. In fact, I, what I read was that one of his, this pastor said to him, you just need to, to marry a woman and this will take care. I think he actually married that preacher's daughter. I'm not sure how that was. And then he got outed and was in California and had a suicide attempt himself, had lost some friends, had seen friends harassed and arrested at the bar. He goes back to one of those bars and asked to talk to the people who were putting out the Advocate magazine. It was an old mimograph paper at that time. He wanted to take out an ad. And they said, oh, no, people have been hurt for the church. We want to, don't want to do that. And he kept, he said, I kept talking to them for about 30 minutes. And by the time he was through and telling them how he felt like God wasn't through with them, they said, we'll give you the ad as long as you pay for the next two. And so 12 people showed up at his house. He told his neighbor what was doing, what was going on. And his neighbor said, they're going to arrest you. They're going to show up. His, his, his roommate was not very happy with him either. Now, you'll get a good kick out of this one. His, his roommate said, well, what time? My tricks don't get out of bed till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and he said, well, you better get them up and get them out of there or they can join us for church, is what Troy actually said that day. Sometimes being real and raw is what it takes to reach people. And I'm glad that Troy Perry was able to do that. And Troy Perry's not Jesus. But in many ways, he made it possible for many people to realize that Jesus still loves them and that we have Jesus in us, in the light of God and the vine, no matter who we are, where we've come from, we can still celebrate that in this moment. It, uh, within a few years, there were over a 1,000 people coming to those services. We've lost churches through the years to arson and to all kinds of vandalism, and we've had protests. We even had protests here a couple years ago outside of our worship services, and I'm so proud of you all because I was on sabbatical that time. I got a text from Joy saying we had protesters today, and I thought she was really harassing me because I was on sabbatical, but we actually did. And we offered you all an opportunity to come in the back door, and you all said, no, we're going in the front door of our church. And to have, it takes courage to do that, doesn't it? But to be able to stand firm and to speak truth to power today, it feels like in many ways we are having to fight the same battles that Troy and those other pioneers in our faith and in our community have done. But you know what? God will give us the strength to do that. Can you say that with me? God will give me the strength. God will give me the strength. And together we will allow God's love and spirit to find us no matter who and where we are. 
I'd like to ask you to rise as you're able. I'm very conscious of the time. Tony and Jim are going to be, it's, got, it's only going to be about a, a two-word thing. Bless you, you are. No, I'm kidding about that. <laughs> After 50 years, you deserve more than that. But would you, let's sing this next song as we celebrate the beginning of what became Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches Worldwide. And it's at the end of your program because we're moving things to a different spot. It's What a Fellowship. And the official name of Metropolitan Community Churches has been through the years the Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches, and it's about sharing God's love for everyone. And this is an old hymn, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Design, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. So many people have allowed us to lean on their arms. May we allow people to do the same for us. <laughs> this course, you know, I, I never wanted to be a choral director, but I used to want to be a band director, so, you know, I'm going to stop you every bit. Let's let the good side and the bad side see how you do today. When we do the chorus, y'all going to do the leaning part, right? You see it on here? Are you the good or the bad side? I keep forgetting. You're great. Oh, the great side. Excuse me. Y'all are going to do what's in parentheses, leaning on Jesus. Say it with me. Leaning on Jesus. Now, can you sing that? I don't want you to just say it. I want you to sing it. So don't, don't do the parentheses part. We're going to see how good, and then we'll reverse it. Here, this is the chorus. Are you ready? Here we go. Lead us, Sarah. Here we go. Leaning, leaning on Jesus. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Saying, <laughs> all right, all right. It's leaning, leaning on Jesus, leaning, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure on all alarms. And then it's back. All right, we're going to reverse it this time. They didn't do so good or y'all did another. All right, can you do it? Here we go. Right into the chorus. Here we go. Here we go. Leaning, leaning on Jesus, leaning. <laughs> all right. Here's, here's what I want. We need, we need Carrie. Carrie, come back, please. Yes, you do. All right. Here's the great thing. It says to make a joyful noise yes. unto the Lord. Can I hear an amen to that? Yes. Fred, would you come and lead us in our offertory today? You may be seated. <laughs> God, we worship our God with a sense of humor. There was uh, one other date you may have on your list that you have not mentioned. October 6, 2014. Uh -huh. What happened? Same-sex marriage became legal in Virginia. So we cannot forget about that part of our history as well. What if, reference to last week's sermon, we put Reverend Troy Perry in the, in the uh, shoes of Jabez? Go back and listen to last week's sermon. You get that reference. Thank God for using Reverend Troy Perry to enlarge our territories as a denomination. Look at all the people who have been touched because of Reverend Troy Perry's yes to doing something different, to for stepping into his call. And so today, I'm thankful for all those years back when I was just a wee bit, I wasn't even born yet. 
Let's just be real. I can say that. We believe you. Thank you. I was not born yet for actually neither anniversary, MCCs or New Lives. But I'm thankful for the witness that this church and MCC has, as a whole has provided to me. And all of those who have come along the way have been an inspiration to me, including my family over here, Tony and Jim, 50 years. I could be their child. <laughs> I, I really could be their child. But seriously though, because of the witness of this church, people's lives continue to be touched. And there are many more who still need to be touched. So I invite you to, to give today through the offertory your tithes and offerings so that this community of faith continue to be a witness for those yet to come through. And also, if you have extra to give to the duo fund so that we can really enlarge our territories and bless those. Who would have ever thunk a hurricane will hit Western North Carolina? You always think of hurricanes as hitting the coast, but never inland. But yet climate change ain't real. That's not, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, give as you see fit today. Thank you. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fault and so my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. Would you please rise as you're able for the doxology? <clears throat> You may be seated. Many it did not go unnoticed that you said just a moment ago, let's do the sermon and go home. Did I say that? I think you did. I am not preaching today. I expected to hear a lot a greater applause to that. But Jim and Tony are. I asked them to share with us, although I'm not letting them share, I'm going to share what they shared with me, three things after 50 years that they thought are important for any of us, really. Gay, straight, doesn't make any difference, single, together, whatever. But especially as we try to be in relationship with people and significant others, no matter how long or 
And, and it's important, you know, we celebrate that, but our relationships are our relationships. And some of us have had many relationships. Some of you have had 50 relationships in the time they've had one, you know, and all that. The first thing that they both agreed to was don't smother each other. Say that louder. Thank you, Minnie. As part of what they're going to do in a moment, they're going to light a unity candle. And uh, let's see, it was, you met on a street, right? Wow. <laughs> Tony had a date that got, he got showed up from the date that didn't come. Jim was walking down the street. Now, what's that song? Some, walking down the street, do I, do I, some, what is that song? Yeah, yeah, you know it. If we didn't have to do it with copyright stuff, we'd play that song right now. I asked him what they were wearing. Tony said he had on a pink shirt. Jim said something about leather or something or another. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but as they light their candles, and I give couples an option when they're doing a unity candle, uh, and Pat, you and Baby did that, you left your individual candles aflame even as you lit the one center of re re symbolizing your relationship because you don't lose your individuality. And I think that's really what they were saying. Keep your own individual identity even as you come together as one. The second thing that they said was don't go to bed angry. Now that's a hard one, especially if you're like me. I keep thinking of other things I didn't say that I wanted to say <laughs> and other points I wanted to make. Albert will be through with it and I want to come back and rehash it. <laughs> I'm not sure what Alberto said. We're going to leave that right there. <laughs> and in, in support of that point that Jim and Tony wanted us to share is don't go to bed angry. And you've heard me tell the story about my friends Jim and Jerry who were in their late 80s and early 90s, uh, close to Tony's age. And that Jerry said they prayed for each other every night before they went to bed out loud. And I said, Jerry, why do you do that? And she said, well, if I pray for Jim out loud and he hears me and Jim prays for me and I hear him, it's a whole lot more difficult for me to get up and hit him in the head with a frying pan the next morning. <laughs> so there's, there, there is some, and you do that too. Uh, all right. Not the, frying not the frying pan part. All right, all right, all right. The third thing that they said was to communicate with each other. I used to say that in couples, gay, straight, whatever, that it was the biggest thing was, was communication, it was money, and it was sex. Those were the things we argued most about. I realized that most things and issues about our intimacy and our sexual life come back to communication. So being able to talk to each other is so very, and to respect each other, I think, is what you're also saying. To hear, not just to be talk at, but I think what I was hearing you say is to be able to listen to each other. So often, pastors across this land have preached that scripture from, I think it's Ephesians, where it tells, it says, you know, it's husband and wife, but, you know, we, we all prefer Adam and Steve or Adam and Eve, whatever. It doesn't make any difference. And you've got two partners coming together, and there's one passage in there that says, husbands, you know, you are to love your wives, and it tells wives to what? Do what? Submit to your husbands. That's been used to keep women in their place so often. Take gender out of it and just say two people who love each other coming together. If one is to love the other person as Christ loved the church and the other one is to submit, well, it begs the question, how did Christ love the church? Jesus said, I came to serve, not to be served. And so you've got one person submitting, another person serving. That's not one above the other. That's a relationship of mutuality and respect. We often say that ground at the foot of the cross is the great leveling ground. And yet we know many of us have also have privilege and that we have to realize that other people didn't have the opportunities that we have had in so many ways. So these were three things, to not smother each other, to don't go to bed angry, to communicate and talk to each other, and to keep talking to each other. How many times have you ever gone to a restaurant and you've seen people that you know they've been together since who knows when, and they don't say a word. Now, sometimes you can communicate without saying a word. But my prayer has been for me and Alberto. Now, we've had to overcome the language, the, the differences in our, our, you know, him speaking Spanish, me speaking English kind of thing. And sometimes that's good because I can say things that he may not understand in English, and he can say things back to me in Spanish that I have no idea, and maybe I don't want to know what he says. But you've seen them sit there, and you think, 
Uh, is the silence a good thing? Or is it because they've stopped talking to each other? May we as people of God, and this goes back to all of us regardless of our relationship, may we as people of God not stop talking to each other or to God or to listening to God and to each other. Because no matter how bad things are, no matter the challenges we face in life, the Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right indeed, O Lord, to give you thanks and praise. And so we lift our voices with all the saints and angels and proclaim your glory and unending praise as we praise together, saying, Most gracious and merciful God, as you pour out your spirit upon us in these gifts today and the gifts that we hold in our hands and gifts others will throughout the week, may your spirit find each of us and give us what we need in this moment. We are ever so humble and thankful as we come to this table of community, this table of thanksgiving, and this table of grace and mercy. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus took the bread from the Passover table and blessed it and broke it and said, This is my body offered open to you as often as you receive it, you receive me. In the same way, he took the cup and poured it and blessed it and said, this is the new covenant. It is grace. It is mercy. It is forgiveness. It is acceptance. It's all wrapped up in one and it's for you and you and you and you. Would you say it with me? It's for me. And now look around to somebody else and say it is for you too. In that wonderful picture of what heaven's going to be like when we're all accepted, we're all there, no one better, no one less. My goodness, today we proclaim the great miracle and mystery of our faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, siblings, all know indeed that you are welcome to receive today from this table of grace. Whether you're a member of this church or not, it doesn't make any difference. It's about celebrating God's love for you right where you are. You don't have to be a member of this church or of any other church. If you're joining us online, go get a cookie, a cracker, a cup of juice, a cup of wine, it doesn't matter what, and join us as well. If you didn't receive one of the individual communion packets, if you'll raise your hand and Jamie will bring you one, if you'll raise your hand, she'll bring you one right now. May we share together as the body of Christ. The cup of grace and mercy and salvation, may we share together. Would you rise as you're able as we sing the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray.
Would you please remain as you are? Well, it could have been Here Come the Brides, but we decided not to do that to you. The last time that the two of you stood before me was on a rooftop in Washington, D.C. in 2013 when you were legally married. And before that, you had had a holy union. I think Reverend Marty did that in what year? 20, 20, 2004. 2004, 20 years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. And now 50 years after that, you come to this place. Thank you, thank you both for allowing us to share this moment with you. I'm going to ask now if you will come up and light your individual candles, not the center candle, but the in your individual candles re representing each of your lives to the point that you met 50 years ago. Tony, if you'll come and stand here, and Jim, if you will come stand here. Now, I always say this, at, and some of you have been to uh, their same gender weddings that we've done, is that, you know, there's not the traditional bride and the groom that you're used to seeing in predominantly straight weddings. Um, so I always determine who stands on which side or which side is which. If I were standing at the foot of your bed, and you're both lying in bed, which side would you be on? We're right, 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 right. Oh, you're right where you would. Okay, yeah. okay. I haven't been there to see what it is. I just want to clarify that. I do want to clarify that, that point. Jim and Tony, you can step a little bit closer together as you share now and renew your vows together this day. Go ahead. Yeah, I will go first, and, and I, I want to say this before I start. We've had a, a Holy Union in 2004. And we had a uh, legal marriage in 2012? 13. 13. 13, so it was bad memory. <laughs> and we did sacred vows to each other two times. So I wanted to do something a little different this time. I wanted it to be light. Still sacred, but light. And uh, I want to go first because I know Tony's probably going to get all mushy and I'm going to get all teary and all that. And mine is not like that at all. Mine is a take on an old classic song. Now, some of you here are old enough to remember this song when it came out. And others of you here have heard, probably heard this song because it's a classic. But it goes kind of like this. The problem is all inside our head, I said to a younger you and me. The answer is easy if we take it logically. There are ways to help us stay together, don't you see? There must be 50 ways to keep your lover. It's really not my habit to intrude. Further, I hope my meaning won't be lost or misconstrued. But I'll repeat myself at the risk of sounding cute. There must be 50 ways to keep my lover over 50 years. 50 ways to keep your lover. You don't stab him in the back, Jack. We need to share a plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. You work to maintain the you and the me. 
hold, <laughs> hold your hands on the bus, Gus. <laughs> we have to promise to discuss much. That's the key to maintain you and me. You don't stab him in the back, Jack. You can come along with me if you want. We need to, we need to share a plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. I listen to you and you listen to me. Hold hands on the bus, Gus, in your case, the Airbus. Yes. <laughs> we have to promise to discuss much. That's the key to maintain the you and me. If we do this, there really isn't too much pain. Doing these things makes us smile again and again. Let me repeat myself and explain about the 50 ways to keep a lover for 50 years. You don't stab him in the back, Jack. We need to share a plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. I listen to you and you listen to me. Hold hands on the bus, Gus. We have to promise to discuss much. That's the key, Tony, to maintain the love between you and me. Amen. You know, as I look, and I'm looking at the video, and I see that gray hair. I didn't have gray hair back then. <laughs> but I'm proud of my gray hairs. I didn't give it to him. <laughs> what a journey, 50 years. Thank you for loving me all these years, despite all my flaws. Thanks for taking care of me, being there for me, when sometimes it was very hard to do so. Thanks for being love, that un unconditional love. You know that love we both received from Poco. Mm -hmm. I pray now among all today's witnesses and the remaining days that I have left, that I too will take care of you, mm -hmm. that I will comfort you, that I will keep you happy, and above all, help you to, to, to continue to live out your dreams. I love you, Jim. Oh. Oh, you. I thought you were going to kiss for a moment, but I haven't I know, renewed I, you I yet. I learned that from, uh, from okay. <laughs> So I'm going to ask if you will come now and light this center candle, symbolizing all that you've shared for us thar, with hope for all that you still have yet to share, keeping who you are individually, but staying in unity in God's love and God's spirit with each other. Would you light the unity candle? Put the unity. <laughs> Our fire insurance is paid up. <laughs> They were a hot couple. <laughs> Gracious and merciful God. Wow. What a joy to be able to be in this moment with the two of you. May you continue to feel God's love. May you continue to feel the love of all those that are surrounding you right now, of your family and friends back home and other places. And those family and friends that have been through this space and place that we call new life through the years too, some who are in the eternal glory of God and some who continue to still stay connected with you for, from afar. Know that it is God's Spirit that has brought you this far, that has connected you together. Know that it is God's Spirit that does so even today and goes with you now into all that you have left and share. May you know indeed the hope, the peace, the love, and the joy that will give you the strength that you need for this day and all the days ahead. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jim and Tony, as you renew vows today, and I jokingly said that I was going to say that as they renewed their vows, that Jim was taking A, E, and I, and Tony was taking O, U, and Y, as they read, why did we do this? But we see now why. We hear now. There's no question about the why. To think about in that moment that it could have been anybody else that it was the two of you that God brought together. I know you say, thank you, God. Mm -hmm. And now if you'll turn and face me. And now by virtue of the authority vested in me, 
as a minister of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, yes. In accordance with the rites, rituals, and practices of the oh. Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. And something that oh, we did yes. in 2013. Oh, yes. That you were legally married in the oh. Commonwealth of Virginia, even yes. though it was in D.C. And we came back, but it's now legal here in the Commonwealth of oh, Virginia. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I now oh, can pronounce yes. you renewed in your vows. Oh, yes. And indeed, oh, may yes. God's Spirit be with you both, oh, and yes. all God's people Amen. said, Amen. 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 Jim and Tony, husband and husband, partners in love for life, you may kiss each other. <laughs> we'll turn and face the congregation. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present to you, Tony and Jim, renewed 50 years of marriage going forward. <laughs>